Mr. President, thanks so much for doing this. Um, Joe Biden has indicated after the uh, uh, Woodward information came out that your handling of the coronavirus and that situation was not only despicable, but it's almost criminal. What do you say to Joe Biden? Well, I think a statement like that is criminal because we did a much better job than he could ever have done. As you know, he was months later before he even thought the ban was a good thing, and ultimately he had to apologize for what he did. We would have lost hundreds of thousands of lives. And what I said to Woodward was actually good. I said, calm, we need calm. We don't need panic. Uh, they want me to jump up and down and start screaming, is everyone going to die? Is everyone going to That's not what leadership is about. I'm a cheerleader for the country. We need calm. That's all I've said. And by the way, that was done after. That was done after I had already banned China right. from coming into the country. That was in February. So you did the ban January 31st. Yeah. So, Janine, I took tremendous steps. Everybody knew how I feel. Otherwise, I wouldn't be banning China. And then shortly thereafter, I banned Europe. We saved hundreds of thousands of lives with each one of those bans and say probably two or two and a half million lives by doing what we did early. So you say that your timing was good, but let me ask you about Bob Woodward's timing. He did this interview with you on February 7th where you talked about how dangerous the virus was, and yet he waited until September, seven months later, to announce to the American public how dangerous you said it was. Was his timing good? Look, uh, he is a, an opportunist. Not a bad guy, to be honest. He's doing his thing. Uh, his first book, I didn't have anything to do with it, and he wrote things that were false and untrue, and I could have straightened it out. And I said, let me do I took quite a few phone calls, 16 phone calls or something like that, and we had some good conversations. Not long, but good conversations. And I don't even know if the book is good or bad. I mean, I can tell you that what this says is that I said, don't panic. We don't want panic. It, you know, the press will make everything look bad because it's fake, the fake news, most of it. I'd say 85 percent, unfortunately. That's the number we're up to. But uh, I discussed with him lots of different things. I think they were very good discussions. We'll see how it comes out. But on this subject, if you look, and he's actually being hit because if he thought it was wrong, then he should have reported it early. He, you know, if, if lives were going to be lost, he should have reported it early. The truth is, he didn't think there was anything wrong with it. And I think that he thought it was surprising that the press even picked it up. It's fake news. It's all fake news. Well, in fact, when he called you in March, uh, a month later, you said to him, I didn't want to cause panic. And that's precisely, uh, uh, you know, why I, as a leader, didn't go out and just say everyone's going to die. Well, go out and look at the great leaders of the world. Winston Churchill stood on the rooftops in London, very calm, making speeches. Winston Churchill, uh, you want calmness. You don't want somebody going to be jumping up and down. I could do that, too. I could jump up and down, say, oh, this is terrible, this is terrible. We want strength, we want leadership, and we don't want panic. What about the vaccine itself? Now, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and, and the, the Gallup survey that they just did says that the, the, the acceptance of the vaccine is pretty much going along political lines. The Democrats don't want to accept it because they don't trust it because it's coming out of your administration. They don't want it because they, don't, they think it's going to make me look good and it wins the election for me. But we're very close to a vaccine. We also have already come out with therapeutics. If you look at remdesivir and others, uh, the plasma, you take a look at the things that we've come out with already, and the, the number, we're 85 percent better in terms of uh, fatalities. You look at the kind of numbers. I don't know if you've been seeing this, but we're, in, we're really rounding the corner. And this is actually without anything further than we already have. And we have some very good things out there already in terms of uh, I would say in terms of, you can't use the word cure yet, but pretty, pretty close to a cure. You're going to be pretty close to a cure. The vaccine itself, I mean, it could come out in October, but whether it's October, November, December, it's going to come out very soon. We have great companies. They're very advanced, and the results are going to be very good. Well, you know, the numbers, you're correct. The numbers are going down. And there's a question as to whether or not the lockdown works, that maybe people need to get outside. Uh, and if the coronavirus cases are dropping, and Joe Biden now is coming out and saying, you know, on the advice of a scientist, I would shut it all down again, how do you think that's going to work for him? Well, it would be a disaster. And we're setting records on job production. You know, we're 10.4 million for the last four months. Nobody's ever seen numbers like this. We're setting records by millions and millions of jobs. Uh, the country's coming back. It's a super V. It's beyond a V. It's a super V. Uh, retail sales are beyond 
any number they were ever at. I mean, think of it. We're doing numbers now as we're rounding, I think, the final turn. And that's with, without, it doesn't matter, with or without. Now, having the vaccine is great. It's going to happen very soon. Could happen in October. It could very well happen in October. But we're rounding the turn on the virus. They have to open up. It's only the Democrats that are closed. And in my opinion, they're closed for political reasons. They have North Carolina. You have Michigan. You have a couple of other states that are closed. New York. I mean, look at New York, what they're doing in New York, that poor city with the restaurants. You can't go to a restaurant. It's like a ghost town. What they've done to New York and people are leaving is disgraceful between Cuomo and de Blasio. That combination, I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's, and it's, look, coming from New York, it's a very sad thing to witness. But we have to open up our states, totally open up. They're keeping them closed because they want, on November 3rd, they want to have the numbers as bad as possible. Based on the numbers that you're seeing, it's not even affecting us. But probably it would be better if these states were open. Forget about numbers, though. The people that are inside those lockdowns, they're suffering between depression, losing their jobs, drugs, alcohol, all of the different things that are happening to those people. That's causing much more damage than the virus itself. Well, what's interesting, you mentioned North Carolina. Voting has already started in North Carolina. They're on lockdown. How do you think that impacts people who want to vote for you? Well, look, I like people to go out and vote, but if they want to sign something, you know, you have solicited and unsolicited right. ballots. Yep. In the country, they're going to send out 80 million unsolicited. In other words, people that don't even know what a ballot is, all of a sudden, here comes a ballot. Now, we don't even know if the people are going to get it. That's my problem. Supposing they're not sending them to Republican neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Supposing they're not sending them to wherever. Or supposing the people aren't giving them back. Or they go out and they harvest them. Somebody could be either way. But the Democrats seem to do that. I mean, they played that game for a long time. Yeah, I prosecuted those cases. Well, you, yeah. you so might have to prosecute a lot more. The fact is they're playing very dirty. 80 million ballots. We never had any number like that anywhere close to that. And you're going to see a mess on election night that's going to be, it's going to be legendary. And all they have to do is say, go out and vote or request a ballot. Get what's called a solicited ballot right. where, or absentee, a lot of people use the word absentee. Get an absentee ballot where you request it, it comes to you, you vote, and you send it back. That's different. But they're just sending out all over. They're sending out 80 million ballots. Well, they're generic, and a lot of people don't know what to do with them. A lot of people have moved. A lot of people have died. The registration rolls, a lot of them haven't been purged. It's a whole problem. Well, no, how about well, signatures? They don't even want to have signatures they're verified. They're not confirming. They right. don't want to have signatures verified. Exactly. Where are they sending them? Who are they sending them to? Who's sending them back? Who's sending them back? Well, it's a very, it, it's so unconstitutional. It's so dishonest. And you have states that can't even do small so elections. So what can you do way. about it? Well, we're in courts and uh, many, many courts right now. And hopefully the courts are going to decide because if they don't, you're going to have one hell of a mess on election night. So you talked about election night. I want to talk about election night also. But it brings me to the issue of law and order. Uh, and, and you, when you ran in 2016, you were the law and order candidate. It's almost prescient to think that four years later, that is that one of the main issues. So uh, we've got this anarchy going on in the streets. We've got towns in, uh, run by uh, and, and states run by Democrat governors and mayors who are refusing to allow the National Guard to come in. There are people in those cities and states who want order to come in. But you can't go in unless they request your help. That's right. Every problem. What are you going to do? Let's say there are, there are threats. They say that they're going to threaten riots if they lose on election night, assuming we get a, 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 a winner on election night. What are you going to do? We'll put them down very quickly. How are you going to do, do that? that? We have the right to do that. We have the power to do that if we want. Look. It's called insurrection. We just send in and we, we do it very easy. I mean, it's very easy. I'd rather not do that because there's no reason for it. But if we had to, we'd do that and put it down within minutes. Within minutes. Uh, Minneapolis, they were having problems. We sent in the National Guard within a half an hour. That was the end of the problem. It all went away. Kenosha. Uh, you look at Kenosha. Look at the problems they had. In fact, the sheriffs there, the police chief, they're all on my side 100 percent. Law enforcement all over the country is on my side. And I will say this. Look. We have, even with the horrible things that are going on in New York and Chicago, run by, all run by Democrats. Everything we're talking about, you know, is run by Democrats. We're not talking about one Republican place. 
It's all run by Democrats. Even the police chiefs, they're all quitting all over the country. Yes. Every single one, I think I saw 15 or 20, every single one of them is from a, a Democrat city. Look, uh, before China sent us the plague, before the plague came in, we had the best crime numbers in history. Mm -hmm. When the plague came, it changed things. Let's face it, it changed mm -hmm. things. But all of the problems are in Democrat-run cities. They're badly run. The taxes are too much. They, they want to defund their police. Biden is all in that. He hasn't still, to this day, used the term law and order. He's afraid to use the term because he's going to lose. He would lose the radical left supporters that he's got, if they even show up for him, because there's a question as to whether or not they're going to show up. But they don't want to talk about law and order. One other thing. You have a lot of people living in the suburbs. You know it well. You live in Westchester. You know it well. I ended a rule, a regulation, where low-income yes. housing has been forced into the suburbs. And this has been going on for a long time, but especially so under Biden and Obama. I ended it. I terminated it. Not going to happen anymore, unless I'm not here, in which case they're going to reinstitute it worse. So the suburbs are not going to have these projects forced into them. Mm -hmm. Now, who in the suburbs is not going to vote for me? They're going to make the projects bigger, better. They're putting Cory Booker in charge. I mean, the, one of the most liberal. The most liberal is Kamala, but mm -hmm. Cory's right there. And he's going to be in charge of building projects in the suburbs. You're going to destroy your suburbs. It's already happening because you see what's gone on. You see what they've done. They take over the zoning and they force projects. Projects really terrible situation. So the cities are being destroyed and be, uh, the combination of lawlessness and the pandemic shut down New York City and uh, now the suburbs. But you know, well, the suburbs is going to be next. Look, yeah, the I, suburbs, I, the yeah. people, these same protesters, but they're not protesters. They're anarchists, they're agitators, Who and they're they? rioters. Who are they? Uh, they're people that in many cases are paid by whom? And then they're stupid kids. Uh, Who are they? Who's by paying them? people that we're looking at right now. We're looking at them right now. Can you tell me? Uh, no, not yet, but I'll, you'll be going to be finding out pretty soon. Look, they're stupid people, too, because they'll be overthrown as soon as they get their wish. These people don't respect them. They're just using their money. These are super liberal people that have money, and they're helping these anarchists and their agitators and their dangers. Did you see what happened over the weekend with the people walking up to a restaurant and grabbing the grabbing steak their, off the plate food and, and biting the steak and then dropping it down? Yeah. Two elderly people having dinner at a restaurant and they walk in and they take a steak and they take the potato and, and they eat it? And that's exactly the problem. Now you're waiting to be asked in. When does that, when is that change? When do so, you cross the Rubicon? Well, in Kenosha, they asked me in. Right. And we did a job like nobody's ever seen before. But if they don't ask you when, there are not American allowed to do people it who unless want Unless you do insurrection, in which case it's just not big enough for insurrection. You won't do insurrection before no, election. You don't day. need it. You don't know. Not yet. Oh, I'd be willing to do it in a heartbeat if you needed it, but we don't need it. Our National when Guard. When do you need it? Our National Guard is so good and so tough. But they've got the way, asked. Police departments in places that we're talking about, Seattle, we were going into Seattle. And they solved the problem the night before we got there. Yeah, we were getting ready to go. They heard we were going in. Do you hear Ted Wheeler's numbers? They're like 20 percent in uh, Portland. Ted Wheeler's a disaster. He's right. a laughing stock. He went out to protest with the so-called agitators, and they were going to destroy him. They were going to beat him up badly. He fortunately had security, but they were going to beat him up badly. The man is a disaster. If he would say, come into Portland, within a half an hour, the whole thing would be but solved. But he's not going to say that. Uh, the governor's gotten closer. Look what's going on out there. I That's will tell Kate you, Brown, the that? governor has gotten closer. I spoke to the governor two days ago. Good. They're arresting a lot of people. Good. Now, we sent in the U.S. Marshals for the killer, the man that killed the young man in the street. Just right. shot him. I mean, it was yeah, untouched. Cold just cold-blooded killed him. He didn't like his hat or he didn't yeah. like something, and it wasn't a Trump hat. Right. It was peaceful it was, prayer. It was a lot. It was a religious hat. Right. And he shot him cold blood. Two and a half days went by. And I put out, when are you going to go get him? And the U.S. Marshals went in to get him. Good. And in a short period of time, they ended in a gunfight. This guy was a violent criminal. Out of the mouth there. And the U.S. Marshals killed him. And I will tell you something. That's the way it has to be. There has to be retribution when you have crime like this. 
There can't be guys standing up that want to fight. They want to fight. But the, you can't throw bricks at people with shields. But or, the problem, Mr. President, you and I both agree. The problem is there are now prosecutors who are not prosecuting yeah. the protesters. Yeah. This is like a, a grassroots level. They're being funded yeah. by socialists who are now electing people like I used to prosecute crime. They're, they're, they're letting them go. So what's going to happen, and this is a shame, you're going to have a backlash like you've never seen if these people don't stop. Because you have very smart, very tough people that aren't going to take it anymore. And once they say, we're not going to take it anymore, it's going to end in a very vicious backlash. And that's a terrible thing. How does it end? We're not there yet, but you have people that are very angry. You start seeing them, the trucks come in, and the, this comes in, and that. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, you're going to see a backlash, the likes of which you haven't seen in many, many years. Because people aren't going to take it. You know, a lot of people, this is all a left movement, not a right movement. Right. The but a lot of people on there. the right are sitting home watching a television set, looking at Kenosha and looking at Chicago, where they shoot people and kill people by by the dozens every week. Right. It's it's not even believable. But they say they look at it and they say, I'm not going to allow that to happen in my country. Two questions. Nobel Peace Prize, congratulations, you've been nominated for something very significant, the peace deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, other Arab countries to follow. I was researching uh, Barack Obama in 2009 when he got the Peace Prize. Nobody could point to anything he had done. He didn't even have time to do anything. He did very little in eight years, and much of what he've, he's done, as you know, I've terminated. I got rid of the individual mandate, which knocked out Obamacare. We took out the individual mandate, which is the single most unpopular aspect of Obamacare. It was a disaster. But that essentially gutted Obamacare. Most of the things, many of the things he did, we've taken out. One of the things we're doing right now, I just got a report, 311 miles of wall. That has made such an unbelievable difference on our southern border. We're doing so well with that you and immigration. Get the peace prize? I don't know. Look, I've done a job. Uh, we signed a uh, transaction. It's actually going to be the ceremony is taking place next week. I hope you can come. Thank you. And it's going to be UAE highly respected. The leader, Mohammed, highly, highly respected. And Israel is signing. This is the first time in many, many decades that anything like this has happened. I can tell you that other countries are going to be signing on to it. We're going to mm -hmm. sign a lot of countries in the Middle East. You might have peace in the Middle East going a much different route. Uh, the biggest thing that impeded us was that horrible deal that Obama made with Iran. It was the worst deal. Paid him $150 billion, $1.8 billion in cash. How do you approve? That's when I realized the presidency is very powerful. When you can approve $1.8 billion in cash, cash, big plane loads of cash going to people that they have no idea who it is. Debates. So they did a terrible job, and we're doing a great job. I think we can say that with great security. Okay. Last question. Debates. Two yeah. weeks. You're not doing the traditional prep where somebody stands in uh, well, where I, Joe Biden does. How do you think he's going to do? I think I'll do it the same way I did it last time, basically. It's, you know, sometimes, like, Romney was so bad on the debates, and he studied for three weeks. He locked himself in a cabin. He was so crammed full of information get it that out. when they asked him a question, he couldn't speak. <laughs> okay? He should have won that race so easily. But when they, I mean, you were dealing with a failed president because his first four years were a total failure, Obama. Uh, but so, you know, you have to be loose and you have to be able to do it. And the debates worked out well for me. The debates have worked out well for me. I don't know what's going to show up with Biden. I mean, I see different guys. I see a Biden that really tied Bernie. You know, everyone yeah. thought he was going to be killed by Bernie, and it was a tie. It yes, was nothing. It, was. it wasn't Winston Churchill, but it was fine. It was but I've also seen him in some of the other debates where he wasn't even coherent. He couldn't utter in his. How, how do you think he love. goes from incoherent to coherent? I think there's probably, uh, possibly drugs involved. That's what I hear. I mean, there's possibly drugs. I don't know how you can go from being so bad where you can't even get out of sense. I mean, you saw some of those debates with the large number of people on mm -hmm. the stage. Mm -hmm. He was. I mean, I, I used to say, how is it possible that he can even go forward? And he only won because Elizabeth Warren didn't drop out. Had she dropped out, Bernie would have won Super Tuesday every state, and you would have had Bernie instead of Biden. All right. But I like it the way it is. I'm sure you do. I appreciate your time, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Your I know show how is precious great. it is. Well, your show is great. We appreciate it very Thank much. You. Thank you.